is Fido from Self Taught Hustle back at it again. And today I will be showing you guys how to execute the put request. Now, the put request via an API, and in particular this case, a REST API, um, is a form. How should I say this? It's a, it's a way to update a specific data structure, right? Uh, post will send data but uh, put is typically reserved for updating data, right? So the way that we would want to think about this ideally is that we have here an isolated object, right? An isolated JSON object. If you were to go here to the extension, oh, sorry about that. If you were to go here to the extension, which I know is a little hard to see for you guys, um, the endpoint is post, and then this four here identifies the ID of the post, right? So if you were to take this forward slash and four off, you'd get a variety of different posts from one user, right? All these posts are from the same user, but each post has a unique ID. Now, this is five, this is six, this is seven. So let's say for whatever reason, uh, we have a post at number four um, that we don't like the title or the body of the post and we want to go ahead and update that. Well, with our JavaScript, what we would do once again using the fetch function is that we would isolate this uh, data structure from the list of JSON objects here contained within this array, right? And the way that you do that is that you make your endpoint more specific as opposed to pointing to a list of posts. In our instance, we would want to point to the specific post with the ID of four. So via this extension, what we would do, excuse me, via this endpoint, what we would do is we are already looking at the list of posts, but we want to look at the one with the ID of four. We would just set it to four there, forward slash four. And we're going to see uh, the data structure that relates to the ID of four. If we were to do this to five, we would see the ID of five, right? So on and so forth. So the way that we do this programmatically with the fetch method is that uh, we first identify, as we just did right now, the, the, the post that we want to update, right? And then we go to our JavaScript code. So you go here. And uh, for the setup today, just like uh, all the other videos, all you need is a basic markup file uh, with a set of script tags. What we're going to do is a couple things. Here, let me get this all spaced out properly. Okay. Pop, 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 pop. Okay. So we're first going to identify the post that we want to update, right? Which is uh, post the post with the ID of four, right? And this will have a very similar feeling to um, a uh, to a post request, right? Except this one's going to be a put request, right? And uh, so we're going to identify the URL, which is the endpoint. This one right here, and then like our other requests, we set the URL or the endpoint to a string, right? And then we are going to set up the payload, right? Which is uh, essentially how we're going to update the data structure. And more specifically with what we're going to update this data structure with, right? So we know it's going to be the same user ID, right? It's going to be this guy. And uh, we want to target this specific uh, data structure. So we're going to specify ID of four, right? And then we want to set it to, uh, we want to change the title property or the value set to the title property to Fido teaches code and then body Fido loves teaching code, right? Cool. And then what we're going to do is that we are going to go over to our fetch method, right? Our fetch function in JavaScript. And then we're going to plug in 
our input uh, as parameters as value to the parameters uh, that this function takes uh, is going to be the URL, so the destination, so this specific post, and then what we're gonna and then the data that we're gonna send, right? And the data that we're going to send is contained within an other object, actually, which if you guys remember from our um, other videos this week, it's going to be the options object, or well, we by convention have been naming it the options object, right? This object literal. And this is where you specify the type of request that you want to use, right? And in this case, we want to do a put request, right? And then we're going to use a body property. A property by the name of prop uh, a property by the name of property a property by the name of body and then we're going to use json uh, dot stringify once again to pass in the data that we want to update that post with as a string right right so once we do that with our fetch function down here we've specified the url so the destination, and then we want to also specify the type of requests that we want to execute and the data that we want to send as a stringed object literal, right? Now, like the other requests, we're going to use the dot then, right? And we're going to ping the API and more specifically, the specific post. And like the other requests, we want to catch the response of the API, right? I'm going to pass it in as a parameter to an anonymous function. And then we are going to console log the status of the response, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to ping this piece of data here, and then we're going to catch what the API tells us. And we are going to look for a good status code, right? And if you guys remember for our last video, we're looking for a 200 status code to validate that the correct data has been updated, right? So we're going to go ahead and save this. We're going to come back over to our application, system one. And there you go. We have console logged a 200 status. So we have successfully identified the post that we wanted to update, right? We set up the data that we wanted to update this post with, right? We specified the type of request that we want, which in this case is a data update via a put request, right? Stringified the data, right? Pass it into the body property, and then use the fetch function to go to the API and this specific post, right? And update that post with the data that we sent it and then we caught the response to validate that that post has been updated right successfully and it has now the thing again is that this is a simulated api so it's not going to um it's not going to intake the actual data right it's not going to actually change the existing data here but it gives us the simulation to tell us hey look if this were a real scenario you would have successfully updated the data right via this put request. Now, the thing is, is that we don't actually, um, I would check out the, be, uh, the behavior of all the API, like the given API that you're working with, but we don't, we didn't necessarily have to set this up as uh, idea four in the payload, um, mainly because we already specified what we wanted to update here in the endpoint. So really, I mean, we could have completely restructured the way that uh, this post would have looked like, right? So different APIs have different rules, right? Um, but uh, if the, an API would be had no rules on it, um, at a core level, it would be likely that you could just update. You, all you have to do is identify the given existing post that you want to update. And then because you've identified that, you can pretty much update it with a data structure, right? This object literal to look however you want it to, right? Um, but a lot of APIs have rules as to how, uh, how and what you can update in terms of uh, when you isolate uh, data structures like this. Um, just a little bit of uh, extra information there. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.